Good morning, St. James. It's good to be with you, and I hope that this finds you doing well and that you're taking advantage of the beautiful, beautiful time of year it is. Uh, a slightly chilly weekend, but the leaves are changing colors, and what a beautiful time to, to just uh, celebrate Fauquier County and God's, um, God's wonderful creation. I hope uh, while we still are able to be outside that we're taking full advantage uh, I do want you all to, to, to consider that when it gets a little bit colder um, and people are out less, uh, how much more important it is for us to continue to do what we're, we're doing so well, uh, and that is take care of one another. Uh, continue to reach out uh, to your brothers and sisters, uh, maybe expand your circle a, a few more people and uh, go down that directory and, and find folks that uh, you just haven't seen in a while or heard from from a while. And, uh, and please don't hesitate to let me know uh, if there's any uh, any opportunities for me to uh, to be able to help anybody in our community. So uh, I appreciate and thank you for all that you've been doing to uh, to stay together and to show that church uh, isn't uh, defined by these, these four walls. Uh, also, all the information that you need is in the weekly email, and so I hope you're able to, uh, to get the weekly. Um, if not, please share that with those uh, uh, who don't have email or don't have the, uh, the ability to do that, especially uh, as our worship schedule changes uh, week to week. Uh, I will uh, make a point of, uh, of letting uh, people know uh, during our recorded uh, worship, uh, for example, today, uh, uh, today on um, the uh, 18th, we are uh, worshiping virtually, but at 1015, we will have a virtual coffee hour and the link is in the weekly. Uh, next Sunday, the 25th, uh, we will gather at 1015 at the Joneses for morning prayer. Uh, and the weekly email is also where we can uh, keep you updated about our progress towards uh, reopening here at St. James. And when we do, it'll be uh, socially distanced and, and, and masked, uh, but it will be nice to be able to come uh, into our parish home uh, here at St. James. And so um, right now we uh, have to stay under um, that benchmark, which is about 3.5 cases per day. So um, yesterday we had zero cases, today six, so the average is three. Uh, so when our seven-day roll rolling average stays under that uh, 3.5, uh, that's when we will be able to regather once we've, um, we've been approved by the diocese. So, um, so that is where we are, and we will keep you posted. And uh, we, we made, uh, make that uh, uh, decision very quickly uh, as those numbers uh, come in. Uh, so please check the weekly and, and, and make sure to share it, spread the word uh, what we are doing week in and week out. That also uh, goes for our youth groups and uh, formation activities. They'll be announced in the weekly as well. Um, also, our uh, ability to get involved and to serve. Uh, right now, uh, we have our uh, sixth annual Gobble Gobble Run and Wobble still taking place, but virtually, which means uh, you will be able to uh, run or walk uh, any time during uh, that week that's specified, um, and you will uh, your name will be entered in, into our raffles, which we have every year. Uh, and this year uh, is a special year to sign up. One, um, because it's important that we keep these things going. This is our sixth annual and uh, uh, and we look forward to being able to to get to our seventh and, and hopefully it'll look a lot more like it has in years past uh, but also this year uh, we are running uh, and walking in celebration and memory of our dear friend uh, Jill Dart who uh, um, who is really the, the the leader in getting this race off the ground and so uh, so we will run or walk um, or wobble in in celebration and honor of, of her so please uh, please sign up uh, and that sign ups on the weekly also we are uh, gathering food and other things for SPCA uh, this month and uh, we encourage you to to give uh, to that as well uh, we do have um, uh, boxes to receive those outside of the church so you can uh, drop them by uh, and uh, Jen is is graciously taking care of all of that. So um, uh, one last announcement. Uh, our beloved friend Antonio uh, is in Mexico. He has crossed the border. He sent word and he is incredibly grateful for the letters of support and the gifts uh, and the prayers that go with him. Uh, and um, and he def definitely holds St. James uh, dearly in his heart and will continue to update us as he makes his way home. So uh, thank you for all you've done to help him get, uh, get thus, thus far. And with that, let us begin. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. We are so glad to be here with you today. We miss seeing your lovely faces. The Lord be with you. 
Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, in Christ you have revealed your glory among the nations. Preserve the works of your mercy, that your church throughout the world may persevere with steadfast faith in the confession of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Prayers of the People I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for this gathering and for all ministers and people. Pray for the church, especially for Michael, our presiding bishop, Susan, Jennifer, and Porter, our bishops, Ben and Ted, our clergy. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people, especially for Donald, our President, the Congress, and the Supreme Court of the United States. We pray also for those in law enforcement, for their safety, their morale, and that they may know the support and gratitude of the communities they serve. We pray for those in the armed forces, their families, and all deployed in harm's way, especially Mark. I ask your prayers for all those who have suffered or feared discrimination, mistreatment, or violence because of their God-given identity. Help us to understand, to acknowledge our corporate responsibility and guide us towards sustained healing, reconciliation, and unity. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, the lonely, the burdened, the anxious, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble, especially for Ruby, Emmett, Tom, Charlotte, Pat, Patty, Keith, Nalia, Howard, Mary Lee, Karen, Helen, Carol, Bonnie, Steve, Judy, John, Joan, Ansel, Tina, Linda, Fred, Kay, Ed, Marie, and for those whom we now name, either silently or aloud. I ask your prayers for all health care and emergency workers, those who continue to put themselves at an increased risk to provide essential services, and those facing economic insecurity as a result of COVID-19. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of God. Pray that they may find and be found by God. I ask your prayers for St. James Episcopal Church and school, our Stephen ministers and their care partners. I ask your prayers for the departed. Pray for those who have died especially any whom we now name, either silently or aloud. I ask your prayers for the peace and unity of the Church of God, for the faithful and growing relationship between First Baptist Church and St. James Episcopal Church. We give thanks for our many blessings, which we now name, either silently or aloud. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. From wherever we find ourselves, we offer our prayers to you, the God who promises to abide with us. During this time, we know and trust your presence in our lives. Continue to bind us together, embolden us as your church, to be signs and agents of your hope, your healing, and your love. We pray this in the name of your Son, who came and dwelt among us. 
Jesus our Lord. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. The Pharisees went and plotted to entrap Jesus in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him, along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with truth and show deference to no one. For do you not regard people with partiality? Tell us then, what do you think? Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. And then he said to them, Whose head is this and whose title? They answered, The emperor's. And then he said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. The word of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today's gospel is amidst uh, an ever-escalating uh, rise in tension uh, and, and drama, and you can cut it with a knife. Uh, it started when Jesus came into Jerusalem in sort of the anti-royal procession uh, uh, without um, uh, chariots through the front of the city and, and soldiers and all the regalia of a, of a parade. Uh, Jesus came from the backside of the city on a donkey, humbly, with palm fronds and, uh, and cloaks uh, 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 lining his way. And since he got into Jerusalem, it's only continued. I don't know exactly what Rome is thinking at this moment, uh, but I do know uh, that the Jewish leadership are incredibly concerned with what Rome might be making of this troublemaker who's come into town. Uh, and it goes beyond that. They're concerned uh, for their own position uh, within this fragile church that's, uh, that, that's pretty fractured. Uh, and they are honestly concerned about their people. If Jesus rocks the boat too much, what's that thumb that Rome puts over them gonna feel like? Is it gonna get heavier? Is Jesus putting everybody's health and well-being at stake? Is Jesus threatening all of their religious freedoms to be able to continue to be the church uh, uh, in a way that's been carefully negotiated with Rome? This isn't just about uh, uh, tensions and, um, uh, and frustrations that, uh, and jealousies that there's a new rock star priest priest out there that's getting all of the attention and taking his their flock away uh, this is a deep concern uh, about the welfare of the Jewish state which has already been fractured in so many ways so please hear all of this with that sensitivity this isn't the good guys and the bad guys and Jesus is uh, is just uh, um, hammering home uh, how much they've missed the boat although there is some of this is about a deeply complex moment in history, much like we find ourselves today, uh, and people of faith trying to figure out how to live boldly, but how to live wisely. And where's that thin line? In fact, even Jesus, uh, we'll see in a minute, uh, is called to dance on that thin line, to be bold, but to be wise. It's tough. And I think that's an important piece of this tension and the electricity uh, and the drama that's unfolding is that it isn't right versus wrong or good versus bad. Um, but we see uh, those difficult tensions and those difficult decisions uh, that the church is faced with. Uh, and so Jesus, he's come into Jerusalem and the first thing he does. Now remember that Jesus came as the revelation of God to reveal the, the breadth of God's love. Jesus coming in human form is an affirmation of a God who is relentlessly pursuing us. Uh, we call that story of the prodigal with the dad running towards that wayward child is the gospel within the gospel. That is the uh, truth about God that Jesus is revealing, that God's love is so relentless that it would even allow itself to be poured out upon the cross and still not end. And so when Jesus gets into Jerusalem and he sees a temple where it was very much believed that Jesus uh, or that God was, was, was uh, palpably present, 
had so many gates that you had to get through. How antithetical to the idea that, uh, that God is uh, desperately wanting to throw God's arms around God's people. That you had to go through these money changers to make sure you bought an offering that was suitable to God and uh, that you exchanged your money uh, that had uh, the face of, uh, of Caesar with money uh, that was appropriate, that didn't have false uh, 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 idols on it uh, so that you could bring that into the, ch the church and make, your, uh, and make your offering to God. And you'd lose money in the exchange. You lose money in buying um, the, that fit offering. Uh, and sometimes that burden kept people from God or made coming to commune with God uh, a sacrifice between whether we're going to eat today and whether we're going to be able to go uh, and be in the nearness of God. Uh, and that was so antithetical to, to the incarnation itself um, and to the nature of God that Jesus so fully reveals that Jesus couldn't control himself. And he turns over the money tables and he wreaks havoc. And it is worth noting that uh, that's these people's livelihoods, that they make their living uh, on being there uh, and having the, um, uh, the, the right coinage and the right offerings. And uh, it is just their piece of the economic system uh, that, that allows them to provide food for their families. And that's probably the side the Pharisees and Sadducees would fall on that. Uh, and this uh, rabble rouser comes in and, and, and knocks it all over. Not only did he make a scene. And then uh, as he uh, comes into town uh, and, uh, and they challenge him again and again, uh, we get this tension. They're trying to trap Jesus and Jesus is pointing a light on the ways that the church is failing to be fully the church. Failing to fully reveal God. And he tells these uh, escalating parables. And then we get to this moment. Uh, and it's worth noting that this moment takes place most likely in the temple. Other gospel uh, accounts are more explicit about it. Uh, but it's likely they're back in the temple, which is important. Because they're trying to trap Jesus in the temple with a question about paying taxes and see how Jesus responds. So they realize, uh, and they are the scholars, they are adroit at figuring out how to take sacred scripture uh, and, and, and apply it to real world problems that are going on. And so they know that this is a big one. Uh, this wasn't just about paying taxes. We can all argue about which taxes are, are more onerous or, um, uh, or what we'd like to see our tax funds go toward uh, and what things we don't necessarily uh, feel like we'd like to be spending our tax money on. But we realize that we give to a whole and we elect officials uh, that, that make those decisions uh, and, uh, and we get to reelect every certain number of years like we're, we're doing uh, uh, in this season right now. Um, but this was different. One, a lot of the needs of the community weren't met by the tax base. The church took care of that. Uh, yes, there were roads and infrastructure uh, that those taxes went toward, uh, but the tax that most were concerned about was the occupation tax uh, that was applied uh, so that Rome could keep that thumb down on them. They had to pay for their own occupation. They had to pay so that Rome could be there uh, with their soldiers, making sure they didn't step out of line. They had to pay so that there was a system that could tax them for all these other things. That was the tax that they had such issue with. And they knew the Pharisees and Sadducees. They knew uh, this was a ripe issue. They knew that there was no easy answer to this. And they knew that by asking Jesus he would have to choose between his own self-preservation or loyalty to Rome or the common thought of the people. And if he went in one direction, he might spare his life but lose his following. And if he went in the other direction, he might keep his following but lose his life. And so they 
came in and they buttered him up a little bit, just like we see in those uh, first opening remarks of a debate. It is such an honor to be here and to be able to debate this, this fine human being. And, um, and they did likewise. They said, you know, Jesus, we know that you are without guile, that you would tell the truth even at the threat of, uh, of, of punishment and persecution, uh, that you are a person of faith uh, and that your integrity uh, and your loyalty to the truth is such that you will tell exactly uh, what is true and real. What do you think about paying taxes? Do you think it's right to pay taxes to Rome? They got him. There's no way that Jesus can gently step out of this. This might be the way that they are able to save their people, to save their faith, to save that tenuous balance with Rome. And then Jesus says, lend me a coin. Let me see a coin. And they hand him a Roman coin. Just that easily, remember where they are. They're inside the temple where people have, uh, have parted ways with, uh, with hard-earned money in an uh, uh, in a, in a, in a exchange for, for, for proper coinage to bring into the temple. And these leaders came in uh, without regard. They had a coin with Caesar's likeness on it. And so he says, whose coin is this? Whose uh, image is on this coin? And they say Caesar's. Um, and of course, there's, there's, also, um, there's also the words around it too that uh, acknowledge um, the, the, uh, the deity of, of Caesar. And, um, and so Jesus says, whose likeness is on this coin? Caesar's. Then render unto, unto Caesar what is Caesar's. And unto God, what is God's? So we've used this for a lot of things. We've used this to separate church and state. Okay, the church will deal with the church's stuff, and uh, the the uh, the civic world will deal with the civic world. Uh, uh, render unto unto the country what's the country's, and unto God what's uh, what's God's. And Sunday morning is for church, and uh, the rest of the week is for us uh, uh, living our, our our civic and in, in other lives. Uh, but that is not at all what Jesus is saying. That's probably what the Roman loyalists were hearing. Render unto Caesar, give to Caesar the coins. In fact, they might have even heard, render unto God what is God's as belonging to Caesar because of the way they deified Caesar. But what Jesus was truly saying, whose image is on that coin? Whose image do you see when you look in the mirror? Whose image is coming to you today? God's. We are all made in the image of God. We are beloved children of God. All things come from thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. All things are God's. Caesar's power, Caesar's money, Caesar's uh, military strength, all are fleeting and they all belong to God. That is the truth of this. And just as Bishop Ted mentioned last Sunday that uh, we bring the whole of ourselves uh, into, uh, into, the, 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 into the, the, the ballot box. Uh, we bring the whole of ourselves into every aspect of our lives. This is the absolute opposite of the separation of church and state or the separation of who we are on Sunday from the other six days. Uh, this is the acknowledgement that those cannot be separated. And that's a huge, tall task, especially as we get irritable, as we get divisive, as we turn on our particular news um, uh, feed and we get more and more convinced uh, that we're on the side of, uh, of, of, uh, of what's right and they're on the side of what's wrong uh, and we alienate one from the other. We've separated ourselves. Well, that's not my Sunday self. My Sunday self loves all people. No. What God is calling us to do is to integrate those. All the decisions we make, how we care for one another, how generous we are, uh, the phone calls we make uh, to the person who's alone, uh, the food we bring over, every aspect of ourselves is integrated. Every decision we make is a reflection of the divine image in the world. 
It's huge. It's a huge responsibility. But there's also another piece to this. What's also inescapable is God within us. Even as we're unable to come uh, and uh, worship together in this place in the way that we are used to, even as things uh, seem to isolate us, we are never apart from God. God is woven into the wholeness of our lives, and therefore hope is woven into the wholeness of our lives, and we can't escape it. The truth of this is not just a clever retort to the, uh, the, the leadership that's trying to trap Jesus, but an affirmation that we can escape God. And if we can't escape God, then God will never leave us. And hope will never wane. So carry both of those. You are made in the image of God. God's desire to throw God's arms around you is palpable because God is with you. And in that, hope, hope can never, ever be lost. Amen. Thank mm -hmm. you. Remember that life is short, and we have too little time to gladden the hearts of those who walked away with us. So be quick to be kind. Make haste to love. And may the blessing of God Almighty, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Our worship is now ended, and our work in the world begins. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.